Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to cover what I think is a remarkable trick and it involves these six steps right here. So in these steps I encourage you quickly to try this trick to see how awesome it really is. So here we go. Choose a three digit number where the first and last digit are different. So I can choose 300. You don't want to choose numbers like 323 because the threes in the hundreds and ones places would match. So you don't want that. So go ahead, pick a three digit number, reverse the digits, and write the result. So if I had 300, it doesn't just become three, but zero, zero, three. So include the leading zeros. Then you want to subtract the smaller number from the larger number. Whichever is smaller um, of your two, subtract it from the larger. I get 297, but if you get something like, let's say 99, right, let's say the difference is 99 here, make sure you write 99 as 099. You want to include that leading zero. Then you want to reverse the step, so if you had 99, you now have 990. For me, I had 297, so now I have 792. And then I want to add the, the numbers from steps 3 and 4, that's these two numbers here, right? and write your result on a piece of paper. Then what I encourage you to do is try this once, try it twice, try as many times as you want until you have that moment where you're like, whoa, that's really cool. So go ahead, pause the video and try it a few times. And then resume it and we'll talk about why this trick works. Okay, so I hope you tried it a few times. Um, and what you might have noticed is that no matter what you're doing, no matter what um, three digit number you pick, you always end up with 1089. And I guess we can call this the 1089 trick. And what's remarkable is that this number is special in many ways. Um, we'll only cover one of its properties in this video, but there are so many cool properties for this number, which to me seems totally random, but also mystical, right? 1089, what is up with that number? So let's talk about, um, we'll go to another page, let's talk about why this trick works. All right, so first of all, we want to model the first step of choosing a three-digit number. So three-digit numbers, like let's say um, if I choose 321. If you think about what these digits represent, the three and the two and the one, the three really represents what? Not just three, but 300. And the two represents not just two, but of course 20. And the one represents a one. Why just one? Well, because here we're dealing with place value. So you can think of 321 as 300 plus 20 plus 1. You can decompose it in that way. So in algebra, let's say we call, uh, let's say we think about these three numbers. Let's call 3x, right? Let's call 2y, and let's call 1z. I'm going to put a line through the z so it doesn't look like a 2. So we have x, y, and z. So if we want to use these variables to make 321, we have to take 3 and multiply it by 100 to get 300, 2 by 10 to get 20, and 1 just by 1 to keep it in the 1's place value. So if we want to write this as an expression, and x is 3, we want to make 300, of course. So we do 100 times x, and then we do 10 times y, and just 1 times z. So this is our expression for 3 digit numbers. You can plug it in. Plug in 3 for x, you get 300. Plug in 2 for y, 10 times 2 is 20, and 1 for z, it's 1 times 1. That makes the number we need, or any three digit number, as long as x, y, and z are whole numbers. One tricky part, I think, is in step 2. We've got to reverse the whole numbers, uh, reverse this number. So if we had 321, that becomes 123, right? 321 becomes 123. So we reverse the place value of each digit. So instead of 100x plus 10y plus 1z, we get 100z plus 10y, that middle number stays the same, plus x, or 1x. Then we have to subtract in step 3. So we don't want to subtract right away, that'll make things quite confusing. We want to think about what would happen with these two numbers if we're subtracting. So okay, what would happen? If we did 321 minus 123, you would have to borrow two times. Let's see how that works. To do 1 minus 3, I would borrow 110 from the 10 group and put it here. 
So we have 11 ones, or a 10 and a 1, minus 3 is 8. Now we try to do 1 minus 2, so we borrow from the hundreds place. So instead of 3 hundreds, we're going to have 2 hundreds, and we have 11 tens, or 110. We can think of it as 11 minus 2, which is 9, and 2 minus 1, which is 198. So we have to model this borrowing process here in the algebra. Whoa, how do we do that? Well, let's just play with this, this first number up here, because that's the number we're going to be altering. So what are we going to do? We're taking 110 from the middle digit and adding it to the units digit. So we can do that. 10y, take 10 away in our middle digit, and then add 10 to the units digit. So it's 1z plus 10. And we haven't um, altered the hundreds place yet, so we'll leave that there. Okay, so then what's next? Take 100 from the, the hundreds place and add to the tens place. So it's 100x minus 100. And then here, 10y minus 10 plus 100. Whoa, what do we do there? Well, 10y minus 10 plus 100 minus 10 plus 100. What's that? Well, it's the same thing as 90, right? So here we have 10y plus 90. And then here we leave this units place. We're not going to touch that. We have 1z plus 10. Okay, cool. So now we subtract the second expression from the first. Subtract 100z, subtract 10y, and subtract an x. Can we scroll down a little bit? How do we do this? Well, don't be overwhelmed by this expression. You can take it in pieces. 100x minus 100 minus 100z. That'll be our hundreds place. So 100x minus 100 minus 100z, and then we have 10y plus 90, and we're subtracting 10y. Okay, so what do we do there? Well, we have 10y plus 90 minus 10y, and you see that the, the 10y and minus 10y are going to cancel. Put parentheses here. And then finally, z plus 10 minus 1x. So 1z, move over this way, sorry. 1z plus 10 minus 1x. All right, and believe it or not, we're almost done. All right, so this is our new number in the trick, this three-digit number. Let's go back to what we're doing here. Hang in there. All right, so we chose a three-digit number, reversed the digits, subtracted the smaller from the larger, and now we have to reverse again. Holy moly, how do we do that? My way of thinking about the reversing again here is to just really factor out and identify my place value. So let me just move this here. All right. So in this hundreds place, which I have in green right here, I'm going to factor out 100. So it's 100 times x minus 1. 100 times 1 is minus 100 minus z. Right? In the tens place value here, we, we have 10y minus 10y, and all that's left over is 90. And then here in, the, in this pink or ones place value, we can't really simplify anything, but I'm going to make my life easier. I don't want to write coefficients of 1. That confuses me. So I'm going to write z plus 10 minus x. Just a little bit less to think about. So we're going to be switching again the ones and the hundreds and leaving the middle term intact. So how do we do that? Okay, hang in there. So we're going to switch this part right here, right, with this part. And we're going to leave the place value of 101 intact. So 90 stays in the middle. Now in the ones place, our green moves over here. We have x minus 1 minus z. Leave the hundreds alone. We don't want to change the place value. And put your z plus 10 minus x over here. And then we might, we're going to leave the 100 in there as well. OK, what just happened? Let's go back to our steps. All right, so we reverse the result, and now we add the numbers from steps three and four. Okay, this is our last step. Watch how cool this is. So now we have to add the numbers from steps three and four. And that's, that's right here in the work. And my, my work's all over the place. I tried to color code it. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. But if you think about all the steps that have happened here, um, right, if we look at everything that's going on, we subtracted the two numbers here, 
that gave us this result. So this is the number from step three. Then here I took that number and factored it, and here I reversed it. So this middle part right here is, is nothing different. But what's nice about this, I think, would have used this number and its reverse here and add them, as we as we're told, and we'll see what happens in this problem, because I think it's pretty, pretty cool. You can see why this problem really works. So we're going to add these two numbers. I'm just going to get rid of these brackets right here, because they're confusing. Okay. So you made it this far. And what's wonderful about algebra, I think, is it helps you see the relationship in numbers that you can't see otherwise. And you made it this far, and you might feel like we've gotten nowhere, but watch what happens now when we add. Watch how everything comes together. All right. So 90 plus 90 is 180, right? Here, in the ones column, we're going to add these terms. Negative x plus x, they cancel out. And once stuff starts to cancel out, I get kind of excited because I know things are going to simplify, hopefully. Z and negative Z cancel out. 10 plus negative 1 is 9. Okay. Over here, we can distribute the 100 and think about it, but I also think we just have 100 groups of each variable. So that just means to me we have 100 X's, and down here we have 100 negative X's. So what happens? The X's cancel out. We have 100 negative Z's and 100 positive Z's. They also cancel out. And finally, we have negative 100 or 100 negative 1's and 100 tens. So that means we have a thousand, 100 tens is a thousand, and negative 100, we're adding that, so it's minus 100. And what do you see? Well, you see that we have 900 plus 180 and plus 9, and that's 1089. So think about this awesomeness, right? How cool is this? We can show, even though I, I will tell you that this problem is definitely beyond my number sense, I don't understand why it works in terms of the numbers. I only understand it in terms of the algebra. We're showing that you can pick any x, y, and z, anything, plug it through this process, and what ultimately must happen is you get 1,089. And you could, you could try this with all three-digit numbers, but, but that's no fun, right? There's no elegance in that. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this trick, and I would love to see your interpretation of it. Thanks.